So the next video is about the Grand Canyon, and we know it's some weird things going on there and weird discoveries. So we're gonna check out the Grand Canyon discovery that terrifies the world. Let's go. As far as epic landscapes go, it's pretty hard to beat the Grand Canyon. This place is awesome in the truest sense of the word. And in all of its obvious visually Random. spectacular charms, there are many other cool and interesting things to find in this vast and prehistoric national park. These are the 20 strangest things ever discovered at the Grand Canyon. Number 20. Cliff Collapse Reveals Fossils it's always fascinating when new fossils are discovered. With each finding, science makes a step towards progress in its understanding of the way the world is formed and changed throughout its history. But when fossils literally capture a moment in time, then that's the cause to be extra amazed. When part of the Grand Canyon had a cliff collapse back in 2016, a Norwegian geologist named Alan Krill went poking about in the rocks that had fallen, and he made an awesome discovery. As a visiting professor at the University of Nevada, Krill had taken a bunch of students out hiking in the geological wonder that is the Grand Canyon when he saw the fossils. He took photographs of the fallen rocks and shared them with some colleagues, and it transpired that these fossils were the footprints of two creatures that had taken a walk across a sand dune about 313 million years ago. Very, very narrow digits probably their claw. This sand dune would have eventually become the Grand Canyon, and their footprints would be encased in the rock of that epic landscape for millions of years before a shift in the rocks revealed their tiny part of the story to the world once again. These fossils are currently the National Park's oldest fossilized vertebrate tracks, but who knows what else could be inside that incredible landscape. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the fancy topic. Although there are plenty of cool and interesting real discoveries in the Grand Canyon to show you, we still insist on taking a little foray into not- Look like a huge, like, turtle shell nonsense land to look at a silly picture. This is allegedly the Grand Canyon discovery that terrifies the whole world, and it purports to be of a mummy that was found by a bunch of tourists at the mummy. National Park. But there is something distinctly fishy about this picture. What do you think it is? As always, you can comment down below using the hashtag FancyTopic and let me know what you think about what you just saw on the screen. Number 19. The Great Unconformity. One of the craziest things that's been discovered in the Grand Canyon is actually not there at all. Mysterious. This is the thing that is known as the Great Unconformity, a feature of the erosion of the rock in the Grand Canyon in which there's evidence of the geological change in the area over a long period of time. The unconformity is that there is actually a massive part of the geologic record that is missing in the Grand Canyon, about a billion years worth to be precise. So how does it happen? Well, how can a billion years worth of rock layers just be missing? There are a couple of different theories about this, but the main one would suggest that since the part that is not there is the surface between the Tapiat sandstone and the metamorphic rocks of the Granite Gorge, it is a period of time in history of the world known as the Snowball Earth. This is a time when almost the entire planet was covered in ice, during a period of glaciation, and the places on Earth where the Great Unconformity exists, like in the Grand Canyon, were affected by the Snowball Earth. When glaciers move, they tend to erode sediment and drag it away from any underlying rock, which could explain gotcha. how so okay. much rock had shifted and is no longer present where it would otherwise be expected to be. This is also possible that the rock simply didn't form during that period in these areas, but it's not possible at present to determine exactly how or why this happened. Number 18. Cave of the Domes there is only one official cave that is open to the public in the Grand Canyon, and it's actually a network of underground caves and is super interesting to anyone who is into hiking and poking around in dark holes. And entrance, the main entrance. 
It's a hike down to the cave system of the Cave of the Domes near the area of Horseshoe Mesa at the end of Grandview Trail. And not only is the cave itself kind of cool, a hike there takes you away from the more busy village area and into a part of the Grand Canyon with yet more spectacular views. There is an old miner's cave with limestone domes that have been gradually eroded over the millions of years. The cave is dry and dark and eerily quiet, and the signatures scratched into the cave wall add a nice spooky element. These are actually just the markings of visitors from the 1900s. Nowadays, you're encouraged to write your own in a visitor's book instead. Number 17. Nautiloid Fossils This next old rock is a coiled nautiloid fossil that was discovered in the Kebab Formation in the Grand Canyon. Finding a sea creature inland like this might seem a bit weird, but the area has changed somewhat in the 270 million years since the creature was alive. The area that the fossil was discovered in is covered in limestone that was created during an era when the Grand Canyon was actually covered by a shallow sea. This creature was a long-ago relative of modern-day cephalopods like squid, and it would have lived on the seafloor and used its tentacles to catch prey. Apparently, this is one that is known as a holotype specimen, meaning that it was actually used to identify and describe a new species called something I can't begin to pronounce. Number 16. The Split Twig Figurines all the way back in 1933, a bunch of discoveries were made in various caves across the Grand Canyon. These are split twig figurines, and they are really, really, really old. Usually crafted from a single twig that has been split, hence the name, these shapes are often willow sticks that are bent and folded into intricate shapes to make the figures of animals. Yeah, so, I'm just, uh... There are several different designs that have been found all throughout the Grand Canyon, but the most typical are those that are shaped like deer or bighorn sheep. Occasionally, there are pieces that have been shaped to resemble spears. These figures were found in 15 different caves across the region and have been dated to 2,000 to 4,000 years ago. These split twig figurines have been found in many places across the western states of America. There are variations in the styles of wrapping and folding that are used, and it appears from radiocarbon dating that they were made in many places across the region for at least 1,700 years. Dope. They offer a look at the people who lived in the area in the past and some of the ways that they lived. Were these toys, or perhaps they were pieces of art or used for religious purposes? What do you think? Go ahead and have all your opinions in the comments section down below, because I know that you want to. Number 15. Uranium Mine if you've not yet felt even remotely terrified by the stuff that I've shown you from the Grand Canyon discoveries, then this next thing may actually be the one that gives you a mild sense of concern. This is the really alarming trend in uranium mining in a region that is not only the most extraordinary geological landscape possible, but is also home to at least 11 Native American tribes and is a literal national park. Yes, mining for uranium that is, the extremely deadly radioactive junk used in nuclear power production and nuclear weapons, is being done around the outside of the park boundaries. But the thing with uranium, and its pollution, is that it doesn't really care about boundaries when it's leaking into the earth, or contaminating the water supply, or causing untold long-term damage to the natural environment. Not to mention the people and the animals that live there. The Grand Canyon National Park Service is working to keep uranium mining out of the park itself. You would think that this place at least would have a degree of protection from this kind of stuff, but the almighty dollar and its associated greed knows no bounds. That's what I think it's for. So I hate when they be acting like they doing it for our benefit. Oh, this might get into the public's drinking water. They throw out stuff like that to make us feel like, okay, they have our best interests at heart. Come on now. Come on now. It's about this, what's on the screen right now. The money. The money. Uranium mining near the Grand Canyon began in the 1950s in a place known as Orphan Mine. This is just two miles from the Grand Canyon Village. And there have been no fewer than eight uranium mines all around the Grand Canyon National Park. One, which is in operation today, is threatening the springs inside the Grand Canyon with contamination. Huge efforts are in place to try and protect this region from the devastating impact of uranium mining. There's now a law that prevents new mining claims from being staked, but mines that already have valid existing rights are allowed to continue. It is a risky business, but hopefully the continued efforts for protection 
will eventually make uranium mining illegal across the whole region. Number 14. Grand Canyon Cavern Hotel A stay at the Grand Canyon Cavern Hotel in Arizona is unlike any other boring box-shaped hotel room on Earth. This place has a suite, which it claims is the lo- Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is an actual hotel? You're kidding me, right? This is an actual hotel? <laughs> I was wondering, but you know how you hear things and they say things and they, then they show it to be something completely different, maybe a museum, hotel style museum or something like that, I don't know. But an actual hotel, bro, that's crazy. Largest, deepest, darkest, quietest motel in the entire world. That's quite the claim, but they are probably right. Wow. This hotel room is over 65 million years old and located at 220 feet below the surface of the earth. This is the largest dry cavern in the United States. And if you book this particular room, you'll have it all to yourself. You can actually book it too. <laughs> Y'all are crazy. Y'all are crazy. I don't care how much the draw is on it, how, like, yeah, take me down there, let me see it, and then get me out of there. Staying overnight in there, I don't think I could do it overnight, bro. No. Self. The caverns were formed 65 million years ago from the limestone when the Grand Canyon was the site of an ancient sea that cut across North America. This place was a highlight to stop on old Route 66 and was designed to be a tourist destination. They run tours of the underground cavern as well as hotel rooms and the unique opportunity to spend the night in the cave itself. But what do you think? Would you like to sleep in a cave? Or would it all be just a little bit too spooky? Go ahead and get involved in the comments section down below. Number 13. Horseshoe Canyon Petroglyphs Horseshoe Canyon is actually in an area to the west of Green River and the north of Canyonlands National Park in Utah. So, not the Grand Canyon, but, you know, never mind, it's still interesting anyway. These are the petroglyphs and pictographs of Horseshoe Canyon. In fact, this type of rock art is so well known in the area that it has its own category. It's known as Barrier Canyon style rock art. These petroglyphs, that is the art that's made on the surface of a rock by removing layers of scratching and picking and otherwise carving it, There have been humans in Horseshoe Canyon for as far back as 9000 BC. This is when Paleo-Indians were known to have hunted large mammals in the area. There is evidence that early people here hunted mastodons and mammoths across the southwest region. It's believed that Native American people lived in the canyon until about 1300 AD. The main area in which there are petroglyphs is the part of the canyon known as the Great Gallery. Here the images are well preserved and numerous. The panel of art is about 200 feet long and 15 feet high, and the art mostly depicts human-shaped figures that are life-sized and up to 7 feet tall. Number 12. Shasta Ground Sloth A super-sized sloth may not sound like the most terrifying of animals. I mean, these things are the cute and sleepy creatures that are often drawn as sweet little illustrations on greeting cards and baby clothing, aren't they? Well, the Megatherium was much less cute of a cartoon and more of a colossal carnivore. So put what you think you know about sloth to the side for a moment. Back around 5 million years ago, there was a very particular type of ground sloth that hung around in South America. These were up to 10 times the size of today's sloths, and they could weigh up to 4 tons. Yes, that's right, these things were elephant-sized. They also walked on their hind legs like people do, and this little fact makes it the largest upright walking bipedal mammal that has ever lived. Jeez. Although not strict carnivores, the general shape and structure of the Megatherium would suggest that they likely hunted other animals as well as gathering food from their habitats. Although some extinct ground sloths grew as big as elephants, there's evidence of some slightly smaller ground sloths that inhabited the Grand Canyon. These were the Shasta ground sloths that lived there during the last ice age. The Grand Canyon was cooler and wetter than it is nowadays, and it was full of vegetation which would have been a good thing for such a massive herbivore. Skulls of these creatures have been discovered in caves, and there were also pieces of fur and even sloth poo that is still stinky today. The cave is dry and kept at a stable temperature, which allowed for these things to stay remarkably well preserved for as long as 11,000 years. 
Weird. Number 11. Pseudoscorpions. Between 2005 and 2007, researchers were studying the stuff in a cave in the northern part of the Grand Canyon when they happened upon a couple of scorpion-type creatures that they thought might be brand new, or at least undocumented, until that time. They took a further seven years of rigorous study to be able to fully determine that they were indeed a new species, but they were not scorpions in the true sense. They were actually pseudoscorpions, because although they did look like scorpions, they did not have the tail with the venomous stinger that characterizes those species. Instead, these cave-dwelling creatures have their poisonous stinging parts in their pinchers. They are also adapted to the darkness to such an extent that they don't have eyes. It's creepy and still dangerous even if they are tiny. They only measure about 0.12 inches in length, and even so, you wouldn't want to step on one in a dark cave, now would you? No. Number Another reason why I want to stay in no hotel, in no cave, or anything like that, bro. What's to say one of them jokers don't crawl up on your pillow at night while you're sleeping, huh? You ain't gonna like that, I promise you. Number 10. The Chiricahua Leopard Frog. This frog species is known for its distinctive pattern of spots, which is how it got the leopard part of its name. Well, duh. These frogs can be found all across the southwest of the United States, which includes the Grand Canyon, and it was first discovered in the Chiricahua Mountains of Arizona back in the late 1800s. These days, this species is considered to be vulnerable to extinction, as its water supplies are becoming more scarce and droughts are becoming more common. Its habitat is threatened, and there is a type of fungus that is destroying its natural environment in ponds and springs and other freshwater spaces. In fact, this frog, although once common across the region, is now missing from 80% of its previously known habitats. Well, the small green spotty frog is not what should scare us. The lack of it where it once thrived is... However, a terrifying prospect for the future of all life on Earth. Number 9. The Supai Village One of the most remote communities in the whole of the United States, Super Village is inside of the Havasupai Indian Reservation in the Grand Canyon of Arizona. This tiny Native American community can only be reached by foot, horseback, or perhaps a helicopter. There are around 200 people that are living in the village, which is the capital of Havasupai Indian Reservation. The landscape in the village and the surrounding area is staggeringly beautiful. It has waterfalls and blue pools, as well as those remarkable formations of red rock. Although remote, there are opportunities for tourists to visit the village. They can take a mule ride or a trek out there, and it's possible to stay overnight and enjoy the extraordinary landscape and local culture. Well, it's the day the mailman's coming behind me. Oh, okay. Nearby, there are also famous places like Mooney Falls and Havasu Falls. Number 8. E. coli. E. coli are bacteria that are found in the environment, in foods, and in the intestines of people and animals. Ew. These are actually a big group of bacteria, and most of them won't really do all that much harm. There are some that are super dangerous, though, and some cause urinary tract infections, while others can cause pneumonia or other respiratory illnesses, and many others will give you a dose of the runs, or even worse. So for the most part, people will generally want to avoid consuming anything that has been contaminated with E. coli, because it can make you sick, and sometimes it can make you very, very sick. A news report from back in August of 2023 revealed that E. coli bacteria had been found in water at the bottom of the canyon close no. to Phantom Ranch. That is the only lodging located in the bottom of the canyon. I mean, nobody wants to find E. coli anywhere, but call me old-fashioned, it seems that you probably shouldn't be going around guzzling the water that you find on the ground anywhere, even in the Grand Canyon, so you know, boil any water that you scoop out of a puddle or whatever. Likely as not, the presence of E. coli in water also indicates the presence of poop in that water, so you know. Number 7. Salamander-like footprints. The oldest fossils to have been found in the Grand Canyon are between 1,200 million years old and 740 million years old. Jeez. These are called stromatolites that are created in the limestone by photosynthesizing bacteria that is known as cyanobacteria. 
But there are also a lot of other fossils that show the progression of evolution of life on Earth through millions and millions of years in this extraordinary part of the planet. The Coconino Sandstone across the canyon was made when wind across the sand dunes about 275 million years ago deposited the sand and the rock formation began. These layers of rock now have some of the most densely fossil-filled areas. There are lizard-like salamander sorts of footprints, for example, and for some, these have given creationists a stiffy. They love to argue that they know all about science and will gleefully poke an oar into stuff that they poo-poo, you know, like the formation of rocks over millions of years, if they can say that it was because of Noah and the Flood. So, inexplicably, huh. they reckon that these footprints could have only happened after the flood, when the sand would have been wet. Because there is no other way to moisten sand other than the means of a biblical flood. It couldn't possibly be that the Grand Canyon area was once different and had an inland sea, and that the rocks were not yet formed. These footprints, therefore, could not have been made 270 million years ago, it must have only happened 6,000 years ago. Oh, and they walked here really quickly after they got off the ark from Turkey. Because, you know, all life that walked on the land was wiped out, except that those that Noah saved in the ark. So it all seems completely reasonable now, doesn't it? I mean, who really needs science anyways? <laughs> Number 6. American Cheetah Bones during the last ice age, the Grand Canyon was stuffed full of creatures. The area was relatively mild in the weather department, and as such, there was a lush green area that was full of plant life in order to attract the herbivores. And what with all the herbivores wandering about there, there were also plenty of predators on the lookout for their next meal as well. One such predatory species was the now extinct American cheetah. These big cats actually went extinct at the end of the Pleistocene era, a discovery in the caves of the Grand Canyon was made by scientists who had been revisiting some bones that had previously been labeled as belonging to mountain lions. It turned out that these bones were actually those of American cheetah, and rather than them having expired in the caves, it seems they likely met their maker elsewhere, and their old bones were dragged into the caves by other animals who had scavenged them. How nice! Number five. I wonder if they were the same back then. As far as speed goes, did we have cheetahs back during the dinosaur era? Were they the same size? The reason I'm asking, imagine that size and that speed. But I felt like we'd have, we'd have heard a lot more about them, though. We don't hear much about them back then. So I don't know. I had to do some research and see how far they go back. Vishnu Temple. This is a 7,533-foot elevation summit in Grand Canyon National Park in Arizona. Named somewhat incongruously for the Hindu deity Vishnu, the redeemer of the universe, it was given its moniker by a man named Clarence Dutton in 1880. This was the beginning of the naming of mountains in the Grand Canyon after mythological gods, and the mountain was named thus as Dutton said that he thought it looked like the shape of a pagoda. It still seems incongruous, but all right. The summit is made of the Permian Coconino Sandstone that we've already seen in a bunch today, and Kebab Limestone Caprock. Depending on how you look at it, it could appear like a natural pyramid or perhaps even a pagoda, if you especially wanted it to be. But what do you think? What do you reckon a good name for this would have been? Go on and let me know your opinions in the comments section down below, if you hmm. will. Number four. The Coconino Sandstone Well, it's turned up repeatedly in one way or another throughout today's list, so let's give this rock its very own section, shall we? The Coconino Sandstone is the formation of rock that is named after Coconino County in Arizona, which is where it's situated. The geological formation actually spreads all the way from the Colorado Plateau across Arizona, the northwest of Colorado, and Utah and Nevada. This type of rock can be seen vividly inside the Grand Canyon, where it appears as a white cliff forming layer in the rock. It can vary in thickness throughout the area because of other variations in the features of the geology prints in sand. This is what it looks like in sand. For example, it appears at only 65 feet thick at the western part of the Grand Canyon, but it is as deep as 600 feet in thickness in the middle portion of the canyon, and then oh. it thins out again in the east to just 57 feet in thickness. 
The rock is comprised of fine sand made from quartz grains and a small amount of potassium and feldspar. This type of rock began formation around 275 million years ago, and it's one of the ways that geological and natural history of the Grand Canyon has been most readily viewed. The rock has preserved many structural features like fossil tracks, as we have seen already, and ripple marks, as well as rain patches and sand dune deposits. Who knew that a lump of big old rock could be so very interesting? Number three, Grand Canyon Vandalism. Why in the world would anyone want to go around vandalizing a national treasure? Can we just skip this one? Y'all mind if I skip this one? Y'all probably do mind. But I, I just hate that. that who, who gives you the right or the authority to just come through and tear up history? You know what I mean? Like, who? Like, this part is going to make me mad, so let's get through it. Well, that's beyond me. But wherever you go, there are always idiots, and for some reason, many of them seem to be incapable of controlling themselves. These two numpties were caught on camera when they decided that they should write on the sacred rocks of Moran Point at the edge of the viewpoint across the canyon. Perhaps they misread the name and thought that it was an invitation for morons to go ahead and do their thing. In fact, Moran Point was named after Thomas Moran, an artist who painted landscapes of the western United States back in the 1800s. But anyways, these two idiots were soon to be the subject of a news report in which they were accused of defacing a national monument and they became the figureheads of stupidity. <laughs> Their mothers must be so proud of them. Number 2. The Magallan Monster Bigfoot or Sasquatch is a legendary and incredibly shy sort of creature that is said to inhabit remote wilderness areas, mostly in North America. Bigfoot is described as a large ape-like being, and for some reason... Why? Why, why was you... <laughs> Did anybody else pay attention to the walk? I love the walk. Let me see if I can get back to it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yo, that walk was everything for me just then. Let me see if I can find it. Number two, the Magallan Monster. Bigfoot or Sasquatch is a legendary and incredibly shy sort of creature that is said to inhabit remote wilderness areas, mostly in North America. Bigfoot is described as a large ape-like being, and for some reason, this creature has caught the imaginations of people for centuries. Numerous alleged sightings, footprints, and blurry photographs, and they're always blurry, even now with all the HD stuff we have, have fueled the ongoing debate about its existence. While mainstream science dismisses the creature as a product of folklore and misidentifications, believers argue that the vast unexplored wilderness provides ample hiding places for such a creature, which is a reasonably compelling argument. They range from about this tall to about eight feet. However, people have dedicated their lives to searching for Bigfoot, and still the myth remains. Well, simply a myth. It could be that this is the shyest animal ever, or, I hate to disappoint you, it could be all a load of old cobblers. But go ahead and have all your opinions about Bigfoot and this grainy, fuzzy imagery, if you will. This is the Mongolian monster, also known as the Arizona Bigfoot. It is said to be over seven feet tall and reported to have red eyes and be covered in long black or reddish brown hair, and is said to be very, very smelly indeed. The Arizona Bigfoot has been reportedly seen all along the Mogollon Rim, hence where the moniker of the creature comes from. Do y'all think the the uh, the fascination will ever die down with Bigfoot? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think that it's gonna be around until somebody actually captures Bigfoot and puts him on display and shows everybody that it has not been a myth all these years. Other than that, I think the the Bigfoot fascination will be around until the end of time. Number one, archeological sites. The Grand Canyon is a place that is home to masses upon masses of history. It's not only the place of hugely significant geological discoveries, but it is also the location of many an archeological site that gives historians insight into human history that existed in the area. One such excavation began back in 2008 when archaeologists began to dig at two sites that were located along the Colorado River. This has been a natural break here. It was 
Over the course of three years, they then uncovered masses of evidence of human habitation along the Colorado River corridor in the Grand Canyon. In fact, they found evidence that would suggest that the area had been inhabited by as many as six different and very distinct groups of people over the span of 3,500 years. The canyon continues to reveal more about our own human history as well as the bigger histories of the natural world around us. It is a unique place that can teach us so many things about the vast and incredible life on our planet.